Well, it's that time of the year where we all turn into bike fanciers. Actually, it's not this time of year, it's any time of the year. And bikes are a little bit like wine. You can look at it, you can smell it, but ultimately, do you like it? And is it within your budget? Now, one thing's for sure, what I did learn over 20 years of testing mountain bikes is that the mountain bike brands have definitely fine-tuned their geometry over the past few decades, such disciplines as cross-country, downhill, and enduro. And luckily for us guys on e-mountain bikes is that they've imparted that knowledge straight across to e-mountain bikes. Now, I promise you, you'll find it almost impossible to get a scientific-based test of any bikes. Uh, but I can tell you honestly that having ridden a lot of them, I've had fun on pretty much much all of them, even the shopping bikes. It's all too easy to look at the cream of the crop, but everybody has different needs, whether it be terrain, budget, or sizing. So with this in mind, we've been looking at different prices, materials, and travel. So this then is our Bike Fancy's Guide to What's on Offer. Starting off with the Rock Rider from Decathlon, a really cool, affordable e-mountain bike starting off at around 1,200 euros up to 1,700 euros. Comes with a mid-drive motor with 90 newton meters of torque and four sizes, which means there's a great range of bike in there for everybody. Now, when it comes to short travel, Canyon's Neuron On is a belter. I was only wheeling Chris's bike last week, 29 inch wheels, and of course, with those skinny tires, it means that when you get past that 25 kilometer an hour restriction, it's all so much easier. Wow, I do like a good bit of cheese, but so many choices. And the same applies to e-mountain bikes. What about if all you need is a long range, lightweight all-rounder? Maybe the Specialized Levo, 29 inch wheels, 700 watt hour motor, 150 mil travel, carbon, and pretty good looks. When it comes to carbon fiber, well, there's loads on the market. In fact, some brands only do carbon fiber, such as Rotwield from Germany. I guess the Levo is on the list yet again, but what about that brand from Spain, Mondrica? They do that crafty in carbon. Actually, they do it in alloy as well, and it looks exactly the same. What about long travel? Specialized Kinevo, 180 mil front and rear, either a single crown version or a dual crown version. Yeah, that's gonna be on the list. But what about if all you want is plain bonkers? Then that's gotta be the high bike fly-on with all that integrated light work uh, with a 600 watt hour battery and of course that punchy 120 newton meter TQ motor. Frame only, frame only, frame only. Oh, there's not really that many on the market. It's gotta be, gotta be the specialized S-Works Levo, one of the few frame only kits on the market. What about long range? Well, we were really impressed with the Rotefield RX 750, a 750 watt hour battery. I mean, the range on that bike is immense. Now, there are some of you who like the de-restricted e-mountain bikes, and we rode a version of an e-bike which you can either have as a pedelec or an s pedelec out in Garda earlier this year, the M1 Sport Technique. And what about downhill? Well, we've been really impressed with the Husqvarna bikes from Sweden. Big monster truck in tires, big disc, 200 mil travel. Check out the Husqvarna. When it comes to technology, all lights must lead to grape out in Croatia. We rode one of their bikes earlier this year with a super quick detachable 700 watt hour battery, plus of course, all that onboard tech, the two uh, cameras front and rear, plus all the route finding tech on that bike as well. Now, when it comes to hardtails, that's pretty much Chris's department. He's picked out this high bike fly-on for me. 120 mil travel, plus of course, that 120 newton meter TQ motor featuring once again. And what about shopping bikes? Can we actually use shopping bikes in the countryside? Well, 
Yes, we can. I recently took a specialized Vado out into the hills, also using public transport. I was actually blown away how many people actually go to the train station with their bikes, but so few e-mountain bikes. Definitely an opportunity for you guys there to explore. So there you go. That's it from our look, our brief look at e-mountain bikes for 2020. What's going to happen in the year ahead? Well, it's actually largely going to be led by the battery and motor manufacturers to a certain degree. I definitely think we're going to be seeing a lot more lightweight e-mountain bikes out there, a lot more affordable e-mountain bikes out there. Well, at least I'd hope so. Uh, but yeah, I think exciting times in 2020. So if you want to see about these, what these bikes can actually do in action, have a look at that, that video of the Vader out in the countryside. And also, Chris are getting the maximum amount of range out of his e-mountain bike.